So there's one, only one application in front of the board tonight, which is a site plan review at 38 Franklin Street, map ID 31A023. And we'll get to that soon. But prior to that, we open up the meeting to anyone for public comment who would like to make um, remarks, give remarks to the planning board about other issues in the city um, that don't have to do with the application in front of us. You'll have time for that comment later on. So is there anyone here in council chambers or in Zoom who would like to provide us with a comment? I don't see any text. I don't see any chat. Yep. Okay, hearing none at this point, we'll move right into our application. Um, again, which is for a site plan review to add a second detached dwelling by Peter Benkowski at 38 Franklin Street, map ID 31A-023. Um, is the applicant here and would like to make a presentation? Uh, yes, absolutely. Come on up. You must be Mr. Benkowski. I am. Thank okay. you for having me. Nice to see you again. And um, I know the board has already reviewed the application, I believe, and seen the plans. So um, I don't know how in depth of a presentation would be helpful, but uh, we are planning and hoping to build. Should I get closer to the mic? Yeah, um, no, I was just going to. Do you have a thumb drive, an electro for electronic presentation? Or no? Oh, I don't know. Okay. So, because um, for the public as well, um, you do a screen share. So I'm just going to go here. Sure. Let me. Sorry. Uh, oh, here it is. Ah, mine is good. <clears throat> Okay, I'll just zoom in and you can scroll down. Okay. Okay. Great, thank you. So, um, yeah, this is a plan for a technically a second single family dwelling. As you know, um, we sort of intended this uh, primarily as a two car garage with a studio space above it in terms of our intended use. I'm sorry, this pulled up. There we go. Um, See if I can zoom in for you guys. I might just let this do its thing. Yeah, it's a little slow. I was trying to up bring the new computer in to update it, and then they didn't switch the passwords on that computer. So I can't get into it now. <laughs> well, uh, in, in short, as this is loading, um, uh, our property doesn't currently have a garage or any uh, detached structure other than a small shed. And um, we were looking primarily to build a garage and um, which will be taking up the space of that shed. The shed will be coming down. So we'll stay with one sort of exterior unit. Um, above that will be a finished studio space, uh, which does have a full bathroom, which is why this falls into ADU territory is my understanding. Um, uh, it will be 25 feet by 28 feet. That's, uh, you can sort of see part of the structure there. Mm -hmm. um, so the floor level will just be sort of regular garage space. Um, we're gonna be extending the driveway back to meet the sort of uh, extra parking spot requirement <clears throat> and um, setting it back more or less at the same threshold as where the old shed started. Um, we've done that for a couple of reasons. Primarily it was because um, we, we like our neighbors over at 42 Franklin. Um, and um, they're wonderful. Uh, and they have some windows that sort of face out into our yard. And, um, you know, we've been in their space. They have a dining room there. And they sort of have told us that they like to look out. It's a beautiful yard. Um, and um, so we've set it back sort of as far as reasonably possible so that we won't be blocking their windows. 
um, the the setback, uh, the side setback at the shortest point here, you'll see is 15 feet. Um, and of course, at the back, because of the sort of the way that the fence is aligned there towards the back, it'll be longer than 15 feet, of course. <clears throat> um, the second floor of the structure, as I mentioned, will be a finished studio space. Um, it'll have a, a small spot for a sink, um, sort of an unofficial kitchenette. I don't, we know we're not planning on having a stove in there or anything, but I don't know how to find it here. I'm sorry. I wasn't planning on using this. Um, but um, yeah, this, this, the second floor will be a finished studio space. Well, it'll be primarily used as a writing studio. My, my, my husband is a writer and, and we're primarily just looking for a space for him to write quietly and not be jostled by our dogs barking uh, or for, for me walking in. Um, and the, the bathroom will be there to sort of help for long writing sessions. And, you know, if we plan to ever stay overnight there, but, um, in terms of our planned use, um, we're not planning on renting it out. It's not planned to be an Airbnb. Um, we're, we're pretty quiet folks. We're introverted. We like to be private, particularly with my husband meeting a writer. So, um, we have no interest in renting to anybody else or sort of bringing more folks onto the property. Um, but in terms of any mitigating impacts, um, if we were to sell it and someone else were to use it that way, um, you know, the driveway will be extended so that if there were more folks, their cars will be fully on the property. Of course, the garage will also have two more parking spots than we have now because we'll have the two indoor spots. <clears throat> we're not extending the sort of width of the driveway. The curb, the curb is going to stay exactly the same. Uh, we're not really doing anything dramatic beyond that. Um, only other thing of note is right next to, right attached to the garage is a second little area that we're going to have an indoor sauna just because we really like saunas and we thought it would be wonderful to have while we're building that. Uh, it would be great to attach. Um, you know, we've worked with uh, Maria Chow, who's an architect over in Amherst and uh, have been in discussions with uh, Tagna Construction. Um, they're both fully across everything. As far as we know, we're fully compliant with all the codes. Um, and, you know, I, I did get the comments from uh, DPW earlier today, and um, they look great, nice and easy to follow. I did see that the, I didn't realize there were no sewer lines on the plans, but um, we do know where they're coming and the sewer lines are gonna run uh, underneath the driveway and then we'll cut into the house about where our bulkhead is and connect to the main there. And the plumbing will do the same. Um, we'll of course have that in the plans for you guys um, as soon as it's available. But uh, as far as I know, we're, we're totally, doing our best to be compliant. If there's any notes or anything, we'll, of course, uh, change course. Great. Great. Suggestions, questions from the board? Do you want to just... Um, I do. They're all just about utility connections and not re relevant to the planning board review. And they, and they made a recommendation about... Um, to the applicant that they might want to consider an er a simple erosion control plan. That's not required. It's just sort of heads up because you need to contain the sediments on your site. And the uh, it's going to be all electric back there for the small kitchenette and the correct the bath. Yeah, yeah, we're not putting any gas back there at all. Okay. All right, and there's no trees coming down. It's unusual to have a project in front of us where we don't have to talk about large trees. That's great. Yeah, yeah, there's some shrubbery. I mean, you yeah. you saw there's nothing, nothing really of note. Good. Well, then hearing none from the planning board, what we'll do now is perhaps um, offer comments from the public. If there's anybody here in council chambers or at the Zoom who would like to comment on this project, please come forward. If you're on Zoom, you could raise your hand and we'll wait for your chat message. Yeah, and you might just remind that chat could should be to you or me and not gov.zoom. Uh -huh. Okay, gov.zoom does not respond. Yeah, gov.zoom does not respond. Okay. I don't see any right. chats. We don't see anything. We noticed that in the... Uh, it, some of the files that we got to look at, your butters spoke to the project without any objections at all. Um, so nobody else is appearing here. Um, all right, is there a motion to close the, close the public hearing? 
Sorry, question about not having a kitchen. There's no kitchen. Well, we're there is a spot if I can show you where you know we're we're not planning on having we're planning on having a mini fridge under the counter and a sink. It's not a kitchen. Yeah. If there's no kitchen, it's not a house, is it? Yes. So it's still a house. Um, so we modified the code a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So if you have bathing facilities or and or a kitchen, then we were we count that as a unit and or mm -hmm. huh. and i mean this then allows flexibility for the future sure. yeah, yeah. So, yeah and they're meeting the setbacks for as if though mm -hmm. it were a unit yeah. it's for the use they're talking about they don't even really need to be here right it's just the bathroom the full bath okay that's Got it. yeah yeah, and, and we spoke to Jonathan Flagg, who sort of explained that if we were to sell the house, then, you know, the next buyer could potentially say, this is now a residence because it had qualified, and I sure. know that's why we're doing yeah. this, but. Right. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay. Um, last question, just for me, any, any outrageous plans about exterior lighting for the unit? No, um, we had, um, which by the way, we're, we're open to taking out, um, just under the sort of eaves here on our um, backyard side only. And up here would be two tiny sort of spotlights going straight down. Yep. Um, nothing on the 42 Franklin Street side. Great. That's fine as long as they're downcast. Mm -hmm. You know, that's within our regulate regulations. So. All right. Okay, motion's been made to close the public hearing and seconded. All those in favor? All right, good. So, board members, anything else? I didn't hear any conditions. The only one I recommended was the that. Um, the building permit shall show compliance with the fossil fuel free heating system, but they, they're proposing that. So um, you don't need to put that in as a condition because that's what they presented. But you can worry about traffic mitigation. Um, so you, that you can um, discuss that. Um, this is about 700 square feet. So again, sort of like that ADU, uh, smaller than a standard ADU, which would have been allowed by right. Until we put this in for, for that fossil fuel free unit. So that's um, a good point that um, you can approve a waiver of traffic mitigation, particularly given that it's being used as a studio and it's 700 square feet, even if it were being used as a unit. So that's um, within your jurisdiction to waive that. All right. And that is not a condition, that's just a, a, yeah. a comment that we make yeah. and uh in terms of the final plans uh showing the utility connections and all that's not a condition either that's just under no because they they need to do that anyway before they get a building permit yep. you, you have to show water and sewer availability before you can apply for your building permit and department of public works reviews the request for water and sewer availability based on um how the <clears throat> applicant's going to connect and then they sign off on that so that's just part of the building permit process great so we aren't listing any we aren't listing any conditions at this point we are just the board discussed waiving the uh traffic mitigation due to the small size of the project and the minute to attest to that so it's a pretty straightforward motion. If anybody has uh, particulars in front of them. I move to approve the site plan to add a second detached dwelling at 38 Franklin Street, map ID 31A-023, no conditions. Great. So satisfying. Is there a second? No second <laughs> I'll second it. Thank you. All right, motion's been made and seconded. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All righty. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. With your project. Thank you for doing this work. Okay.
our observer from UMass. I wish there was a little bit more meat and potatoes to this discussion, but sometimes applications are like this. Well, the wicked planning process is perfect and there's never any intention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, never. <laughs> never. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. All right. Um, what else do we have, Carol, in the minute of October 12th? Nope. nope. How about a request to close out Emerson Way subdivision again? Yes. So this time, so I'll go through the history, and if you guys want me to pull up the plans, I'd be happy to do You're that. You're welcome to stay and hear this bureaucratic stuff, or you can also... Oh, great. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> right, um, so... How about if I just, um, we've had you, some iterations of this board have reviewed a conversation about Emerson Way over the last couple of years for different reasons. Um, but so this this subdivision was first approved, I think in 2003 um, and uh, went through various phases of construction. They had a performance guarantee that was changed out multiple times as they completed different phases. Um, and now they have um, completed all the work. Um, I'm going to just um, show you on Google Earth. Thanks, Chris. Um, let's see here, okay. Just to refresh everybody's memory. Okay, there we go. So this loop is Emerson Way. It's a private street. So that um, sort of makes a, um, you know, it's a, there's a sort of different sign off and review by Department of Public Works. Um, this won't go then to street acceptance, as you know, because this came out, I guess that was the last time it came in front of you. So they're asked, they've um, completed their asphalt plans. They've completed um, the certifications from the utility companies. That, that's all required as part of closing out the subdivision. And the last, so what the ultimately um, then they um, still have a, the bank, a tri-party agreement with the bank. So once you make, um, you move to close this out, they can um, close their third-party agreement, tri-party agreement with the bank and release those um, funds. So the homeowners association is fully up and running. Um, the last thing that we were waiting for was a certification that the, so typically we require as part of the asbelt, the two trees per lot are supposed to be planted on each, it, within each subdivision. That usually goes on the asbelt plan. They didn't include that on the asbelt plan. We've got a certification from the landscaper who installed the trees, noting they put actually more than two trees on, on per lot. So um, the applicant is asking um, that documentation to be um, sufficient to show that they planted the trees as opposed to going back resurveying every tree and putting it on a new mylar, um, which would be expensive. So, uh, you know, I think the DPW to the extent um, they signed off on the, you know, water connections, because that's a big issue there that's connecting into the main, the water main on Bird's Pit. And um, I think they've pretty much come to the end, finally finished after 20 years of building out that subdivision. It might be the longest one under construction. Yeah. Well, state hospital is pretty close, yeah. but yeah. Beaver Brook, I don't know if you finished with Beaver Brook. Are we yeah. still holding some money there? No, we're done. We're done. Okay. So um, there was also this, this issue of transferring kind of the uh, the affordable housing rights over to Birch Pit and that development with um, Pioneer Habitat, but that's a separate, that's not linked at all to the homeowner. To the Those are all built yep. and occupied. Yep. And then this weekend, actually, Habitat's going to have an opening um, 
uh, ribbon cutting, yeah, for the units that they are doing there at that at the Burt's Meadow project across the way. But um, the developer, so this changed hands originally from Tofino to um, uh, Rich Matowitz is now the, the um, controlling partner. And then he was the one that developed the required affordable units at Burt's Meadow, but those are all complete. All right. So this is a, a recommendation from the board or a, a motion and a uh, motion and approval to close out the subdivision, yep. which means we can release the performance guarantee and they can record. And the that's just saying the project is done and we don't need the money to finish it. Right. Yep. Any other questions? All right, somebody want to make a motion to close out the Emerson Way subdivision? I'll move that we close out the Emerson Way subdivision. Second. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Very good. 20 years later. All right. Yeah, that's right. We're still waiting at Hospital Hill for that one cul-de-sac that had some drainage issues. That where I think All that's the subdivisions only. done. And subdivisions yeah. are done up there. There's still a lot um, that's buildable. Two lots, I think. Oh, that okay. are They're holding some money on that one no. last there because that one's closed out. You mean Higgins Way, yeah. the one that the city yeah. had to, yeah, yeah. yeah. put that money in finish. Okay, I'm sorry. The motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? I think we already did that. Yeah. Did we already do that? That's Let's okay. <laughs> motion's been made and seconded. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm at the top of our game today. Well done. He's just trying to stretch it out. He's got three approvals. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> They'll be so happy to hear that. Two hearings, okay. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to review our upcoming meetings. That's the only last thing I need yeah. to, yeah. So Monday is the um, um, public forum for the historic preservation plan element that was, um, we hired a consultant to help us develop. So you're welcome to come to that, It'd be what great. Five thirty. Five thirty. And it's here and also on Zoom. Yes. Oh. It's what is an element? Why is it called an element? What does that mean? Well, it's going to be absorbed into the sustainable Northampton plan. So it's a piece. It's okay. a chapter. It's so confusing. You go on the website, it's like a link for element. And it's like it's such an odd H word. I don't know. H2O. I found it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's riveting reading. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah um so it's 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 hybrid um so you can opt if you have if you have a chance to come that would be great it is ultimately it's part of the plan so the planning board is the body that adopts the plan so it will be an amendment to the plan to bring that in do you i mean we have not been part of this process particularly i mean there's been a public process but it's yeah. not we haven't had like hearings about it Right. Uh, the planning board. I read it and was kind of scratching my head as to like, what is the, what's the upshot? Like, what, what does this change other than like, well, it's a policy document. Right. So I wonder if like we should have a, any conversation about like what actually changes in terms of what we do here. If there's anything, I don't know. So no, because it's a plan, there's nothing that changes except, you know, it was, so when someone applies for a special permit, mm -hmm. um, there's a criteria that needs to be reviewed that says, is this in conformance with the adopted plan and goals and objectives of the city? Right. So um, there might be components of the plan that then you would evaluate for a special permit project. But other than that, it's really just setting out policy objectives and um, action items to take that then might have 
subsequent right. you know ramifications on the work that the yeah. reviews that you do i guess that's the part that i'm i'm curious about because the recommendations are like page you know 60 of 90 or something like they're in there deep and when you get to them you're I was kind of scratching. I was not quite sure. I'm like, well, what if they did do all these things that they're recommending? Like, what would that change? Yeah. I'm not quite sure. So I don't know. As a planning board, I don't know if we should have a strong opinion about that or say, oh, historic did it. You know, we should enjoy, like, enjoy that they did it and we didn't have to do it. I don't, <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the, the recommendations are just like the recommendations in the rest of the plan. Uh -huh. So they're, they're recommendations for items that the city can work on to accomplish the goals that are established. So you'd probably want to look at, you know, the goals and policy section and um, I mean, and recommendations, but. Do we um, have like an ability to like ask them to take things out of it? I mean, we can, as a citizen, you can, but like, is there any formal process? Well, sure, because it's going to be ultimately it's your document to adopt. So you can say, we don't think this is appropriate or explain this or what. That's why it's important because the consultants are going to, you know, review this with in the public forum. So I think that might be. Do we have a line item veto on parts of it or anything like that? Can we say like, we like it to say 80% of it or something? Um, I mean, ultimately, you don't have to adopt it. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so y you could say, I mean, I think that would be part of a public hearing process. So it's, you have to make them, you have to um, determine whether or not to adopt it after a public hearing. So right. that could be part of the conversation, a public hearing, mm -hmm. and that could be debated. And you could hear what the public has to say about sort of those issues that you're concerned about and, um, you know, does it conflict with another part of the plan? Is it, um, should it be clear? Should the language be clarified? Mm -hmm. um, but but my, my take is that this uh, very large public forum, not a public hearing, but a public forum, we'd want to give the uh, consultants a heads up that we, we have a concern about this or excited about that. So that by sure, the time yeah. it comes to the public hearing, they've kind of tweaked that or right. that, done What's coming up is not that. This is a presentation, like, or this is this is an official public hearing from the planning board. No, no, no. it's no. not the official public hearing from the planning board. It's the public forum for the consultants and staff and the historic um, commission mm -hmm. to host, um, you know, a, a review and take comment on the draft document, mm -hmm. and so then after the comments come in for the um from the forum historic commission and staff will work with the consultant to say is there anything that needs to be adjusted or changed at, before the final document sense presented? of when the final was supposed to when they want to finish it yeah i mean it's a little bit it's been a little bit delayed because we've asked for you know additional things things mm -hmm. just took time um but there was a first draft which was somewhat different from this i feel like of um some months or a year yeah it was a presentation really it was sort of a presentation on what the on the thing well, that yeah, yeah yeah um so this is the time to really sort of gather um you know public input on the draft before it gets finalized mm -hmm. and then before then the planning board hosts the formal public hearing that's required mm -hmm. before actions taken on the plan. I, I think what we're going to hear at the public forum is many, some residents feel like we're not doing enough to protect neighborhoods. Oh, I'm sure. The, yeah. yeah. So um, people will come out to really speak to it and hope that some of the, the, the plan has that kind of language in there. That's going to, well, that's exactly what I'm concerned about. Yeah. Right. Right. So we have to, do our part in, in overlooking and uh, kind of observing the whole city to talk about the goals of the planning board. And uh, will, this, will this change some of the criteria for a special permit review? You know, there's always like that list of will that get up um, once this is adopted in some way? No. So what would have to happen would be if, in order to meet, let's say, if there's some goals in the in that part of the plan that are inconsistent with um <clears throat> with 
the special permit criteria as it is, or maybe they need to be tweaked, then that's a regulatory change to help implement the plan. So any kind of review that the board does, um, the should be if 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 it it makes sense. And it, I think some of the recommendations talk about sort of maybe ways that regulations could be addressed, but those things are their separate adoption process and um, go through a separate um, public hearing process um, before they're, they come into zoning. You know, so we feel that portions of the plan are in conflict with the current criteria, but we like that, then we would still adopt the plan and then recommend to the regulatory subcommittee that those things be changed to now be in conformance with the new Um we so I think it's probably helpful to be a little more specific about what the recommendations are. So there's some recommendations to take significant areas and put them into the kind of historic protections that we have in a couple of districts now. Uh, and there's some language in there about like uh, recommending going, I think, a two year instead of a one year demolition delay. Yeah. I don't even know what the state law on that is, but whatever. So I don't know. I don't want to debate today, like whether these are good or bad things. I just was wanted to just identify the dynamic. <clears throat> if we adopt a plan later on, a planning board who might be faced with actually implementing pieces of this. We'll say, well, that previous planning board thought this was so wise. We should all we should do it. And I don't know how wise it. I mean, I think we should think long and hard about how wise it is to take both big areas of the city and say they're all historic, so make it harder to redevelop. And you know, I'm not sure that's the recommendation. Although some people might interpret that as being the recommendation. It's definitely some of the recommendations. Um, so I think there's certainly a lot of documentation that's being recommended to be done. Right. And that's a separate conversation documenting a neighborhood doesn't mean that that's means it should be permanently protected as is no it's the first step down. down that road though it could be it could be yeah but not necessarily it could just be okay this is an area where the city's where the city says from a sustainability perspective we need to be adding new housing units to address our housing crisis sure sure then um we should document the structures in that neighborhood in the event that they are that they do go up for requests for demolition sure. and then we've got that documentation but it doesn't say that then you can't take that building down just because it's been you know recorded sure uh, but, but to your point it and to yours, if, if some people might interpret it that way, we probably want to pay really close mm -hmm. attention to what the language says because people are going to interpret it the, what, with what they want it to say. Yeah, I, I haven't, I don't have a strong opinion about every single little address that they've listed in there. I just think it's, this is not value neutral. I'll just, let's just put it that way. <laughs> like, sure. It's not say, oh, it's a cute house. Let's save it, you know, or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of, ways that this will get used, even if we don't have like a, a official protection on things, it, it can get used as saying, well, it was going down that path. You know, yeah. I think we should be aware of how that gets used. And and anyway, as long as we, I think it sounds like we're gonna have a process about it and that's great. Yeah. And so all of those things I think are appropriate for Monday, for the public hearing, for, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, the initial conversation, I think question was this, Historic Preservation Plan is part, uh, it's an element, a component of our master plan. Yeah. And what are the other main elements? Uh, There's transportation, open space. Parks and rec, or is um, that fall under open space? It's under open space and conservation. Um, and resiliency yep, and all climate, gold, resilience climate resiliency. I think computer you know, housing. CPC has a piece in there too, or at least at one point did. Um, so it's not the CPC itself doesn't, I mean, there's, um, there's, um, you know, housing piece and there's recreation piece that, and then now this will be the historic. But they have a plan that takes those other things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a separate yeah. thing. Okay. Thank you, Doug. So the master plan is a living, breathing document, huh? Yeah. yeah. Blueprint yeah. for our city that changes <laughs> depending upon. All right. Well, good. I hope many of us can make it. And uh, it's a big document. I wish, uh, I wish I had it in hard copy so I could look at it, but 
I guess I'll read it as you did, right? Scrolling through. Yep. Do it on an Apple Watch. That's the best one. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can send it to Paradise. Letter at a time. I bill it to the city. I didn't say that. <laughs> I so miss those big plans and all those documents. Oh, so okay. <laughs> Any other comments? Well, there's a, there's another meeting coming up. So that's a historical preservation plan forum. And then we have a... Then we have a meeting, a regular meeting, November 9th, which is yeah. the next planning board meeting. There are two applications on that agenda. Then the following Monday, the 13th, will be the joint public hearing with legislative matters on the lighting. The lighting ordinance. Yes. yes. Um, Have you been issued what the language of that is yet? As of, yeah, it's, um, Sorry, it's out there. Yeah. Um, I can send it to you. It was on council agenda. So it's in the... Yeah, if you could send that around. Yeah. Um, and then you're done for November. And then one meeting in December. Because of Thanksgiving. We skipped that second meeting of the month. One meeting in December. Great. We're hoping to pull together a little site view of some lighting examples around the city in the dark, if we can, before the 13th. Hopefully, most of us are available to kind of go with John Fry, who has the light meter and a little bit more experience with that. Um, to look at some spots, that would be great for me. I know it would be great when I look at the lighting plan, especially to learn more about the, the color range, you know, things like that. That's something we're going to schedule through email or something? Or something? Yeah, yeah. I need to get John's schedule and see when he's available to do that. Great. Anything else come before the board? Anybody? Mr. Tasseron's out there. All right. Is there a motion to close the pub? Uh, <laughs> adjourn? So moved. 7.43. Okay. Motion is remained and seconded to adjourn the planning board meeting at 7.43. All those in favor? Woohoo!